we've been talking about the benefits of mulching our garden soil, another fall chore that we can do that actually helps our garden soils a lot is to plant a cover crop. Now one of the benefits of a cover crop is essentially the same as a mulch. It serves to shade out unwanted weeds. In addition to this, it can also serve as a habitat for beneficial insects, where a lot of times our weeds are habitats for insects that are harmful, such as spider mites. So if we have a cover crop, we've got that habitat ready to go for our beneficial insects. Cover crops can also serve to prevent erosion. They can help our soils keep from washing away during the winter months, and they can help loosen and aerate the soil by the roots growing down in the soil. They also can add organic matter to the soil, and they can bring up nutrients that are deeper in garden soils, maybe not available to our regular garden plants, and deposit them in the surface of the soil where they are available. And finally, if you plant a leguminous cover crop, they actually add nitrogen to the soil. Now the way a leguminous cover crop adds nitrogen to the soil is with the aid of a rhizobacterium. And right here, I've got a vetch, and you can see where all of this happens. What happens is that you see these little nodules on the roots. The rhizobacterium lives on these nodules and with the legume fixes nitrogen from the air and then it is deposited in these nodules. So we're actually adding nitrogen to the soil. Now a properly inoculated legume can fix up to 300 pounds of nitrogen per acre. Now this isn't true of all legume species, however some can fix that much nitrogen. So you can see the benefits of planting a legume as a cover crop. Now as I'm talking about properly inoculating a legume, you may be wondering what I'm talking about. Now the rhizobacteria are actually present in the soil. However, the numbers are not great enough to fix that much nitrogen with the legume. And also they're in competition with other bacteria in the soil for some space on those root nodules. So you can give your plants a head start by inoculating them before you plant them. You can purchase legume inoculant at the garden center where you're going to be purchasing your cover crop and you can actually inoculate or coat your seeds with this. Now it's important to choose an inoculant that is the proper inoculant for your particular species. Here I've got some Austrian winter peas. I've also got some hairy vetch and some crimson clover. And what I'm going to be planting today is the Austrian winter peas. So I have the inoculant that is proper for these peas. Now what you do is put your inoculant in, add some water, and kind of stir that around until you get kind of a slurry going here. And then add that to your legumes. Now you can actually add quite a bit. I might add a little bit more water in here and a little bit more inoculant and stir those around. What I want to do is I want to coat these seeds very well with inoculant and you cannot inoculate too much. So if you don't see a good coating on there, add some more. And this will help not only to fix the nitrogen, but it can also help give you an, a good stand. It can increase the top growth and the root growth, so it will help add organic matter as well because you'll get a better stand on your cover crop. Now here I've got a nice covering on here. And so now I want to plant my cover crop. Now you might think that as we're planting, that if you, legumes are so good, then maybe I should always plant legumes. However, there are non-leguminous cover crops that are very good to plant. And those include winter wheat and winter rye. And there are benefits of those cover crops as well. They basically cover very well. They can shade out the weeds. They grow better in the cooler temperatures than the legumes do. So you get a better cover on those crops. And also, they provide more organic matter when you work them into the soil. So even though they're not fixing nitrogen for your soil, they are providing organic matter. So if you were to, pr to actually plant a combination of, say, a cereal rye and a hairy vetch, one legume and one non-legume together, you would have the benefits of both of these cover crops. Now here, I'm going to be planting the Austrian winter peas. And what I'm doing 
is I'm broadcasting these here at a rate of about 3.5 ounces per 100 square feet. Now that's a minimum rate. You could actually double that or triple it if you needed a better stand. Minimum seeding rates for other crops include hairy vetch at 1.5 ounces per 100 square feet, crimson clover at 1.5 ounces per 100 square feet, and winter rye and winter wheat at 3.5 ounces per 100 square feet. Now you'll notice that the soil here is actually prepared very nicely. You want to prepare your soil like you would for your vegetable crop and get these cover crops off to a good start. It's also nice and moist. And after I get these planted here and raked in, I'm going to want to come back in and water them in if we're not going to have a good rain, which I don't think we're going to get tonight. So I'm going to water them in very well. And then until they come up, kind of wash the water on them. If the, if the days heat up, I'm going to have to get a few more for my area here. Um, we'll want to water them, but once they're established, they won't need watered as much. Now I'm just going to gently rake over the top, not too deep, just enough to barely cover them. And you for sure don't want them any deeper than a half an inch. A quarter to a half an inch deep is all you need. We'll rake these out nice and smooth and then water them in. Now a lot of people wonder when should I till my cover crop in. You can actually let it grow all winter and then as you're getting ready to plant in the spring you can leave it till about two weeks before you want to plant. Either then or till it in before your crop goes to seed because you really don't want it going to seed on you unless you're going to perpetually grow this cover crop. So if you till it in before it goes to seed it will do very well but for sure about two weeks before you want to plant your other plant so it has time to start breaking down. Now some of these cover crops can actually be quite tall by then and in the case of hairy vetch they can kind of tangle in your red tiller so what you can do is actually mow that cover crop and then till it in and that will make it much easier for you. So you might think about planting a cover crop in any fallow ground you have for this winter because not only is it a good soil builder but it also acts as a good mulch over the winter.